Welcome to Play to Earn Crypto Games That You Need to Play, Part 25. Hopefully you're doing well these days. I've been so swamped with the busy season, literally and figuratively, it's been raining like crazy. I was unable to get a crypto video to you last week, and for that, I do apologize. If you want to see what I've been up to, check out my other channel, Chaos Bikes Garage on YouTube. It's been a wild and wet spring so far. It makes for some pretty damn good content. We've been out there almost every weekend. This episode features a game that is in early access, and if they follow through could be quite a promising project, but for now, I'm on the fence about it. This game's called Koakuma, a top-down dungeon slasher with NFTs and play to earn mechanics. I'm your host Chaos Dubs, this is the Chaos Dubs channel, we're going to jump right into part one. So this is where you can find the game, what the bones of the ecosystem are built on. To get started, head over to koakuma.io to download the demo and to learn more about the game. This was launched on Pokestarter and on GameStarter. This Unity-based cross-platform play-and-earn MMO ARPG features a self-described graphics-intensive medieval fantasy metaverse with a top-down Diablo-style view. Koakuma is claiming to host epic battles on both Polygon and the Binance Smart Chain. There are over 720 unique NFTs for equipment, skill runes, skins, and more. In fact, all creatures and items are blockchain-based tokens and NFTs and will be able to be deployed and used on iOS, Android, and PC. Much the same as any RPG, you'll work on improving your skills and items, crafting, as well as leveling up your character by gaining XP. And of course, killing the fierce monsters and exploring dungeons with friends can net you tokens and NFT rewards. Your adventures will take you across the vast lands of Laria. With many geologically distinct areas and much beautiful scenery to enjoy, don't get distracted from the lurking danger at every bend. This game also features an imp system. Imps will be an essential feature of the game to help fight and gather resources and loot. Similar to many other games out there, you kind of have a pet or a buddy that follows you around. Imps can be found through in-game bonuses. They can also be purchased on the market. And imps also have special features and can be hatched. You can find more information in the light paper on their website. Kokuma is set in a fiefdom, aka a feudal society where a lord rules the land. Each piece of land, or fife, their development is entirely dependent on its inhabitants. They're basically small DAOs. Lordship can be acquired by obtaining the Lord Mask NFT on the open market. The tokenomics of Koakuma are as follows. The primary token used for governance level transactions is KKMA. The supply is fixed and will never increase. The most important way that you can earn KKMA is through in-game rewards such as completing specific tasks. Eventual plans include allowing holders the opportunity to participate in governance, voting, and staking pools. BOD is a secondary token and it is mainly used for payments for in-game exchange. It's an inflation type token that keeps the game stable according to economic growth. This token will be used within the marketplace to purchase items, NFTs, and more. With ambitious plans, big promises to keep, and a well-defined roadmap, this game could certainly be a lot of fun and even possibly a decent investment into the future. To learn more, check out the light paper on their website. But for now, let's head into part two and discuss some gameplay. Being in early access, and an alpha no less, this game currently lacks many of the features that we just discussed in the last part, which is a bit disappointing. At this time, there's only one level available, and at first, it's going to be tough. You will find your avatar killing monsters, picking up loot, crafting and managing inventory, and gaining XP. You'll also find currently locked options for your skill tree, messages, and more on the main screen. As you play through and slowly get stronger, killing the enemies will become easier. The monsters are quite predictable and you will quickly figure out how to avoid their attacks and counter them. Using a mix of mouse buttons and number keys, you can volley several powerful attacks to defeat the enemies and grab that sweet, sweet loot. Be sure to dispose of the useless and low level loot so you have space in your bag for the better items. Choose items based on your playstyle. Every item offers different buffs and perks to suit your specific needs and desires. I would suggest finding a plus life for hit perk as soon as possible. This will allow you to keep your health up much easier as you try to clear the map of enemies and move through the areas. Dying will see you return to the main screen and you have to start over, uh, but you get to keep the loot and the upgrades that you earned from the last battle. 
This game is really not particularly complicated and it could appeal to a wide audience, but only time will tell. In this final part three, I want to give you my final thoughts on Koakuma in its current state. So, being that this game may have a pretty wide appeal to many age groups, it's another one of these games that seems somewhat confused as to who they're marketing to. The graphics, character, and color scheme appear to be marketed to kids, but the underlying crypto and NFT integration are clearly meant for the older crowd. And the claims of it being graphics intensive are at best far-fetched in its current state. The graphics are not very refined and they're far from realistic, which overall really isn't a big issue, but it's just not really what they're claiming. It also claims to host epic battles, but I had to force myself to play for an hour due to the sheer lack of epicness I experienced in battle. Playing the exact same thing repeatedly isn't very entertaining, but making progress in those situations is pretty rewarding when you do succeed. Still, that in itself isn't really enough to keep my short attention span interested in playing for hours on end. I would like to see a solid core gameplay loop implemented, as well as a more fleshed out, graphics intensive experience. I would also like to see more choices for areas to fight, although I'm sure that's coming. The skill tree, that's also coming, but for now, the icon should be removed as it's distracting, if anything. Aside from that, the battle is okay at best, the enemies are predictable, and they will get boring pretty fast, and any advancement is often followed by a swift death requiring you to restart, which creates frustration and distaste for the experience overall. Many of these shortcomings can easily be forgiven as early access quirks and kinks to work out if this project does follow through and makes a few improvements. I could easily see Koakuma being a decent sized player base and providing opportunity to many, especially to the early adopters. As always, do your own research before investing in any crypto projects, games, or any of this stuff, and never invest more than you're willing to lose. The markets in the current state are a perfect testament to that. This brings us to the end of today's episode. If you found it informative or entertaining, please leave me a like. If you hated it, leave me a dislike. I can still see them. Don't forget to check me out on TikTok at Chaos Dubs and at Chaos Bikes, and check out Chaos Bikes Garage on YouTube for a shitload of new content. Next week, I will do my best to get another episode out to you. I've got a few games lined up for the near future, so stay tuned. Until next time, take care, be grateful, and thanks for watching. Chaos Dubs out.